Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Restores. On the bench today is a Kenwood KA2000. It's one of my favorite small amps from the late 60s. And it's because of the way it sounds. It's 11 smoking hot watts. And uh, until you've owned one and actually pushed it, you would be so amazed at how tube-like this sounds and the guts it has. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about bias pots. And these are these small things you see they're mostly eliminated from a lot of designs later on in this one there's actually six of them on this board this is the power amp board this is the bias pots here center voltage here and protection level there's a protection cir circuit um, if, D if there's too much DC on the output basically which could be the ca caused by clipping it shuts down the preamp which shuts, you know, lowers the clipping level. Doesn't work that great, but it's it's actually I prefer it over a relay because relays are hard to replace. Sometimes you have to destroy the circuit board to get them off. Anyway, we're going to talk about the bias pots today. Here's what I've learned. This is the 41st KA2000 I've restored. Yes, I keep track of them in my business records, but. Um, this is a big issue and I was just reading a blog tutorial about restoring this amp and they put Nishikon gold caps in it and did a number of things, put some really high quality components in and they left these crummy bias pots. This is the weakest part of the entire circuit design and I'll tell you why. If you've noticed, you'll see I've beefed them up. These are pie hair. They're actually made in Spain. There's, you know, not a lot of current going through these, but more than they should. And here's what happens. Over the years, the bias current drifts up because the pot changes in value. And you end up with the carbon track being damaged from overcurrent. And both of these wouldn't hold value. They're drifting all over the place. All I had to do is just hold it on the board with my fingers and the bias current would go from 14 milliamps way over 60. They're a bad design and that's why I put oversized ones in. They can handle the current better. And this is what I do because these don't fit into the board very well and when they're down at board level you risk touching other things with the screwdrivers you just did. So what I do is I take one of these, extend the little legs put some uh, heat shrink tubing on there so it doesn't touch anything and then put it in the board bend it away from the critical components so then you can go you know you have your meter in the circuit and you can adjust this and you're nowhere near touching anything like this diode bridge here or anything um, the best ones to use are the closed ones these pie hairs are closed I bought these in the past in the recent past Hard to open with one hand. There you go. Um, these are pretty good, the multi turn ones. There's different brands. Um, these ones I think are Burn, which are actually not bad. And it's very nice, you know. They fit in place of the originals on the board. Here's what I found the 500 ohm bias pot, sometimes a 1K in Sansui's, this can handle the current. If, it, if the adjustment is off, these will fail fairly shortly, and what I mean in less than a year, a matter of months if you're listening to it fairly often. I've also found some issues where the internal screw mechanism, it's very small and fragile, will break, they jam inside. So these are good if you can use them in low current applications and you can set and forget it. They will stay stable, their settings. But if something you're tweaking all the time, they don't seem to be able to stand up to it. Anyway. Thanks for watching and listening.